back to my channel. My name is Darian and today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I plan to read in August. Now if this is your first TBR that you're watching from me, normally I pick my books by picking prompts from my prompt jar. As you may be able to tell, my prompt jar is sitting very pretty on my bookshelf still, which means I am actually not going to be using my prompt jar this month. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm so sorry. The reason is because the past few months my prompt jar has not been the kindest to me and I have like always like had a bunch of books that I put aside and I'm like, okay, depending on the prompts I get from the prompt jar this month, I will use these books to fill in those prompts and then I end up getting like super specific prompts that like, like using a random number generator or something like that. And then I end up picking books that I'm not really in the mood for. And so the past few months I've basically been mood reading anyway because I have not really felt like reading the books that I've been picking for my prompt jar. So like for July, so far I've finished zero books that were on my July TBR. I've basically just been mood reading the whole month. I am currently reading one book from my TBR and I'm planning on finishing it before July ends. Today is July 25th, so there's still a little less than a week left in the month. So I do think I will finish at least one book from that TBR, but I don't know if I'm gonna get to the priority read for July, which was This Is How You Lose a Time War. That is a very short book, but I've heard it's very like dense and might take a while for me to get through. So I am a little nervous about that. But if I don't end up finishing that, I have been saying if I don't finish my priority reads, then I get a punishment. And since I have just kind of been in a weird like headspace lately, I don't want to give myself too harsh of a punishment. So I think what I'll do is if I don't end up reading that book before the month ends, I would say if I start it and get a decent of the way through it, then I'm going to count it as read. But if I don't even start it or only start like the first little bit of it, then I will take the punishment. And I think my punishment is just going to be that I'll go on a book buying ban for the month of August. My my book buying has been a little crazy lately. <laughs> it has been a little out of control, so this might even be a good thing for me. But I will say the first week of August, I'm going to be on vacation. The book buying ban will not apply during that week. I'm telling you that right now. I'm definitely going to buy some books while I'm on vacation. But after that, for the rest of August, I will not buy any books. If I don't end up reading This Is How You Lose a Time War, but I'm not sure yet. So I am planning on vlogging in August because I'm participating in some readathons. So if you want to know if I ended up finishing it, stay tuned for that. Or I guess wait till my July wrap up. I don't know, but yeah, that's the situation right now. So that is a very long-winded way of explaining why I'm not using my prompt jar this month. There are so many books that I really want to get to and I don't want to risk <laughs> basically being forced to read random other books and I'm not even reading the books that I've been putting on my TBRs lately. So I think I just need a month to just kind of mood read, but I am participating in two readathons in August, so there is still some structure to this. So the first readathon I'm participating in is the Magical Readathon. The fall term is upon us, and if you don't know, this is a readathon hosted by G from Book Roast. I will leave her announcement video linked down below. She is so freaking creative. She created this whole world, and you get to choose like your character and what you want to study, and it's just amazing. So I am planning on becoming a moon warden, so I have certain prompts I need to fill fill in August but I mean she said if you don't complete the prompts in August it's fine if you extend it a bit which might be happening for me because you know life anyways <laughs> but yeah the other readathon is the Studio Ghibli readathon which I'm actually a host for there are so many prompts and I, def I definitely want to fulfill the prompts for my I guess team which is uh, when Marnie was there but that one I'm gonna be more chill about like I'm just gonna kind of fill out the bingo board and see what books I pick for the magical readathon that could fit for those prompts you know so that one it's not gonna be as strict but the magical readathon I do have a book kind of for each prompt I'll get into that in a second. <laughs> but if you've been watching my TBR videos this year, the way I pick my priority read is I've been uh, looking back at my TBR from a year before and I pick a book that I did not complete from that TBR, whether it was in the month I was supposed to read it or since then, if I have not read it, then I pick a book one of the books I haven't read, that becomes my priority read for the month, hence why This Is How You Lose a Time War was my priority read last month. I'm still gonna do that this time, so maybe that's not the best idea, but I kind of feel bad if I leave out an opportunity to read a book that, you know, I didn't complete last year, because so far all the priority reads I have had to read this year have been good, I think. I'm remembering right. So we are gonna start with that and then I'll go through my magical readathon TBR for you guys. So I don't think I remember any of the books from this TBR. So we're just gonna we're just gonna go in blind kind of. We'll see how that goes. Just gonna watch an ad. The first prompt for August is read a book that's been on at least two other TBRs. 
but that is When No One Was Watching oh. by Alyssa Cole. I okay, I thought it would be Reaper at the Gates, but When No One Is Watching, I did read. I actually did read it last August. So good job me. Oh, read a book that starts with the letter your last read ends with. The book that I've decided to go with is A Lots Away oh. by Darcy Little Badger. I am so excited. Okay, A Lots Away. Well, I didn't read it last August, but I did read it. It was my priority read for, I think, March this year. And so I have read it and I really liked it. Third prompt. Oh. Yep. Use a random number generator to pick a book. Oh. <laughs> Oh awesome. my gosh, I've gotten this two. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, I forgot about this. <laughs> Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I definitely did not read that. So that's a contender. Oh god, but I don't, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to remember, I think that's the one, cause I get her backlist books mixed up, but I think that's the one where like, this woman kind of gets to a crossroads in her life and then you follow her based on whether she made each decision that made no sense like so the whole book follows her whether she chose one thing or the other based on this decision but you don't know what she actually chose i don't know it's something like that anyways we'll see we'll see the rest or if that's gonna be the priority read read the next book in a series oh, maybe this is reaper at the gates but that is a reaper at the gates by saba tahir i know lisa and casey so once again, I did not read Reaper at the Gates last August, but I have read it because that was <laughs> my priority read for, I think, February. So I have read that now. So I think there's one more prompt. Oh God, am I gonna have to read maybe another one? <laughs> ah, okay. Oh, read a book set in a country you'd like to visit. Oh, hmm. I think I remember. And that is She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. <laughs> so the last book was She Who Became the Sun, which I actually DNF'd, but we read that for the Winers last year. So I did read it. I mean, I had to read it, but I did DNF that book. So looks like <laughs> we only have one option for our priority read this month, and that is Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I hope this book is short. I think it is short. Also keep in mind that if I don't read This Is How You Lose a Time War this month, I would like to read it in August as well. So... We'll see. But maybe in another life, Taylor Jenkins read my priority read for August. Stay tuned if I read it or if I fail yet again. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, so let's move on to my magical readathon TBR. So like I said, I am planning on becoming a moon warden. So I have, let me count. I have one, two, three, four, five, six prompts. So that's not too bad. Six prompts and it's not the end of the world if I don't finish the prompts in August. Also, you can't double up on prompts for this readathon, so six six books. Now, one of my prompts for I need an O in elemental studies, and the prompt is to start a book with a drink. So that could be any book as long as it's not one of the other ones for this TBR. And I do have some extra books that I would like to read this month. <laughs> maybe that could be maybe in another life. I don't know. But another prompt is for spells and incantations is to use a color wheel. And I wanted to do that on camera so you guys can see. And I do have some books that, like I said, there are some extra books I want to read this month. So depending on what I get for this, it might also affect what I choose for some other prompts. So I'm going to do that now and we're going to see. <laughs> okay, so I have my color wheel. I'll put it right here <laughs> so let's see what I get personally I am hoping for some of these colors are very specific so I might have to you know use some leeway a bit but anyways let's see hello there oh god <laughs> teal 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Wait. <laughs> okay. I'm rearranging things in my brain. Give me one second. I was going to use this book for another prompt, but I think I can rearrange things so that it can all still work. But one of the books that I was going to read for a different prompt, but it works pretty well for this prompt, is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I would say this is teal. I would say that's pretty teal. That like, I think that literally is teal. So I am very excited to read this book. This has been a long time coming because 
I've mentioned this video many, many times, but I one of my very first videos was a five-star predictions video, and that was over two years ago now, and there are still two books I have to read to complete that list. This was one of them. I suspected this would be five stars. I still kind of think that, although now I'm a bit worried. I feel like I moved past the hype for this one, so... But I've heard a lot of great things. It is a retelling of the story of Achilles and Patroclus, and I think it's from Patroclus's... Patroclus's point of view. Now I have read Circe by Madeline Miller and I didn't love that book but I have a good feeling about this one. So this is the one I'm gonna use for this prompt. Not another prompt <laughs> but yeah. So another prompt I have is to read a book that has the letter L in the title and I have a few options for this one. For the Shadowhunters read-along our book for July was City of Lost Souls and I haven't read that yet so there is a very good chance I'm going to be reading that in August and that has an L in the title but also the August book for the Shadowhunters read-along is Clockwork Princess which also has an L in the title so Either way, one of these could work. Also, the Winer's book for August is Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher, and that has an L in the title. So really, one of my book club books could definitely work for this prompt. I just don't know exactly which book yet, but yeah. I probably don't have to explain the Shadowhunter books to you guys, but Nettle and Bone I really don't know much about, so let's read the synopsis together and we can find out what this book is about, because I really don't know this is Rachel's pick, I believe. Oh yeah, I think my brother was reading me the synopsis the other day. So it says, after years of seeing her sister suffer at the hands of an abusive prince, Mara, the shy convent-raised third-born daughter, has finally realized that no one is coming to their rescue. No one except for Mara, Mara herself. Seeking help from a powerful grave witch, Gra wow, I can't speak today. Grave Witch. Mara is offered the tools to kill a prince if she can complete three impossible tasks. But as is the way in tales of princes, witches, and daughters, the impossible is only the beginning. On her quest, Mara is joined by the Grave Witch, a reluctant fairy godmother, a strapping former knight, and a, chick and a chicken possessed by a demon. I love that. <laughs> Together, the five of them intend to be the hand that closes around the throat of the prince and frees Mara's family and their kingdom from its tyrannous rule at last. So... That sounds pretty fun, to be honest. I thought T. Kingfisher mostly wrote like horror books. I could be completely wrong about that, but this doesn't seem like horror. Like it seems like it maybe has some spoopy elements to it, but I don't know if it's classified as horror, but if you've read this book, let me know what you thought about it. I'm very excited to read it with the whiners. So one of those books that I mentioned can definitely count for the L prompt. <laughs> Another prompt is to read a book with archers or rangers in it. And according to my brother, this book works. So I'm gonna take his word for it. And if he's wrong, then I'm still gonna use it because <laughs> that means I was led astray and that's not my fault but the book is Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb it's gonna happen okay it's gonna happen I am very excited to start this series this was on my TBR a couple months ago and I just didn't get to it but I'm just so excited to read Robin Hobb I've heard amazing things about her books and I've heard like the series just kind of get better and better and I know Stephanie is like really obsessed with this series right now or like the realm of the elderling as a whole all I know about this book is you're following this character named Fitz and he is an assassin's apprentice and I think everyone just kind of falls in love with Fitz even though he's dumb that's what I've heard anyways and I think there's a dog and I think like some animals die in these books so I'm not looking forward to that but for Robin Hobb this book is quite short it is like let's see yeah it's like not even 400 pages and I know she has some books later on in the series that it's like 800 pages so it'll be nice to have a shorter read but I am just very excited to get into this and my brother says there is an archer so we're just gonna trust him. Also, I love these covers so much. They just bring so much joy to look at. But yeah, so this is what I'm gonna read. I also think I might be buddy reading this with Casey, so that'll be fun. But yeah, there we go. <laughs> now the next prompt is a book with a single object as the focus on the cover. And I was gonna use the Song of Achilles for this prompt because the helmet is obviously the focus on that cover. But this was a book I was considering reading for the Buzzwordathon in August, which is books with items or objects in the title. I don't know if this counts as an object is the, my issue, but it's definitely the focus of the cover. But that is The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. I have this cute mass market paperback edition, but like the keyhole is clearly the focus of the cover. Is that an object? I don't know, but I'm gonna count it because it's like the whole cover basically. Also key 
is an item. So we're using that for the buzzword-a-thon. But all I know about this book is about, it's about this woman who becomes this nanny to these three kids and they live in like this smart house. So like you can like say your commands into the house and the house like responds, which sounds like it could be very creepy. I believe this book goes back and forth in timelines. One of them is when she first starts nannying these kids and the other one is she's in prison because she is convicted of the murder of one of the kids. So that sounds kind of spoopy, but <laughs> maybe I shouldn't be reading this, but it's fine. Um, I have read one Ruth Ware book before, One by One, and I really, really liked it. And I've heard a lot of mixed things about this book. Some people like absolutely love it and some people really hate it. So I'm excited to see where I fall, but I liked One by One a lot. So I'm hoping to like this as well. And I mean, like this is a teeny tiny edition, but again, less than 400 pages and usually mystery thrillers I can like fly through. So this is what I'm using for that prompt. <laughs> then we have one of the oldest books on your TBR. And I think you can interpret this either as like oldest on your TBR as in you've owned the longest or oldest as in it was written a long time ago and I am choosing the latter. So I am hoping to read Emma by Jane Austen. This is a very old book, obviously. It's from, I can't remember the year, the 1800s. It's definitely one of the oldest books I own. And I'm just, I'm very excited to read this. I read Pride and Prejudice last year and I really liked it, but I didn't like it as much as I thought I would. So I'm really hoping that I just fall in love with this. And I always, I've been waiting to read the book before I see the movie with Anya Taylor-Joy. I know I don't have to read the book before I see the movie, but that's just who I am as a person. And the movie looks so good and I love Anya Taylor-Joy. So I am just very excited to finally read this book. And all I know about this is that it's about a girl named Emma shocking and I think she like plays as a matchmaker with her friends or something but then there's two guys who end up being interested in her something like that I'm not entirely sure but I'm very excited also I think I'm buddy reading this with Lisa so it's gonna be a great month for buddy reads with my besties but yeah this look like it looks very thick but this edition is like like look at in relation to the size of my head it's pretty small so even though this edition is like 500 something pages also the font is like fairly big. I don't know how well you could see that, but anyways, I'm hoping that it doesn't look as long as it actually is, is my point. <laughs> but excited about this one as well. So those are all my prompts for the Magical Readathon. So like I said, I am hoping to read all those books in August, but if I don't finish them all in August, it's not the end of the world. G has given us per permission to extend the readathon if we need to, but my plan is to read all those in August. Now, there are a few other books I would love to get to in August. This one I'm definitely reading and no one can stop me. And that is Beach Read by Emily Henry. I recently read Book Lovers and absolutely adored that book so much. It's one of my favorite books of the year. And I know so many people, this is their favorite Emily Henry book. Lisa and Casey read it very recently and they both gave it five stars. So I just think like the power of the besties, there's no way I'm not gonna give this five stars, you know? And I'm going away in August, the first week of August, I'm going to be on a beach and I know like people have said, told me like it doesn't actually take place that much on a beach but it's called beach read and I want to read it on the beach <laughs> okay so I'm reading this in August and no one can stop me it's probably gonna be the first book I read in August but all I know is this follows these two writers one of them is a romance writer and the other one is a literary fiction writer and they're both experiencing a writer's block so they decide to switch genres so she starts writing literary fiction he starts writing romance and I think like they start having these writing dates together or something and then they fall in love something like that and I'm just very excited because I love book lovers so much and I'm just so excited to read this on the beach it's gonna be great so can't wait to read this one and then like I mentioned I am hoping to read both City of Lost Souls and Clockwork Princess in the month of August. Like I said, City of Lost Souls was the Shadowhunters read-along book for July and this is the August book and I'm especially excited about this one because I mean, I have read this book before, but it's been a very long time and I don't remember everything that happens in this book. And <laughs> I just want all my babies to be happy, especially Will and Jem can just, I don't know, lie in a corner. I don't care, but I love Will so much. And I'm very excited to see the conclusion of the series, even though I know it's going to destroy me. So that'll be fun. Also, I mentioned our Winer's Book Club pick for August, Nettle and Bone, but I still haven't read the July pick, which was my pick. So 
I definitely need to read this book and there is basically no way I'm gonna read it before the end of July. So that book is Blood Scion by Deborah Falei and Casey's actually currently reading this book and I think she's enjoying it but she's saying that it's very stressful so that makes me stressed but this is a YA I think fantasy right? Yeah there's magic and it's inspired by Yoruba Nigerian mythology and according to Casey it's pretty dark but I'm very excited about it. It's one of the most beautiful covers I've ever seen so I guess I'm reading this also in August. <laughs> and there's two more books I want to mention. Okay, we're almost there. The first one is The Girl Beneath the Sea by Axie O. This is the group book for the Studio Ghibli readathon, and I actually recently ordered this book, so it should be getting to me hopefully soon, and I can't wait to read it. I don't know too much about what it's about, but I've heard pretty good things, and I ordered the UK edition, and I mean, both covers are stunning for this book, but especially the UK edition, I just find it so pleasing to look at so i am very excited to read that with the other hosts of the studio ghibli readathon and then finally i i don't know if i'll have time to get to this book this month but we're gonna try another book i would love to get to is kiss her once for me by allison cochran she is the author of the charm offensive which is one of my favorite books of all time and i was lucky enough to get an arc for this book it doesn't come out until i think september but it might be october i don't remember but it is a Christmas book and it's sapphic and so it would be a, pr a bit early to read it now in August but I would like to read it before it comes out. So if I can, I'll read it in August but we'll see about that. I don't know. Okay, so this is my TBR for August plus a couple other books that I mentioned including Maybe in Another Life which is my priority read for the month. Yeah. This is what it looks like. It is a bit daunting, but I think if I had done my prompt jar this month, I would have had a hard time getting these books into that TBR. And these are all books that I'm just very excited to read. So I'm, I think I made the right decision not doing my prompt jar this month, although I did miss it. But if everything was a plan, it should be back in September. And I'm sorry if you missed it as well, but it just, it's just what had to be done this month. So yeah, let me know if you're participating in the Magical Readathon or in the Studio Ghibli Readathon. I would love to know that. Let me know what books you're planning on reading in August or if you're planning on reading any of these books or if you have read any of these books. Let me know what you thought about them. Just let me know all the things in the comments down below. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you guys soon with another video soon. Bye!